everyone, it's Gracie. Welcome back to my channel. As I'm doing this voiceover, I'm currently sitting on my back porch because it is such a beautiful day. So if you hear some birds chirping or even a few lawn mowers, you will know why. Here on my channel, we do a lot of art, sketching, bullet journaling. So if you're into any of those things, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much. I cannot believe, I literally cannot believe we're staring down the barrel of August already. 2018 is going to be over before we know it. I feel like it's going at warp speed. I don't know what the deal is, but regardless, I'm excited to be heading into a new month. The first month in my new bullet journal spread. If you have not seen me set up my brand new bullet journal that I just got, I will leave a link right here where you can click and watch what collections I added to my new bullet journal. For August, I decided to do a Monstera, Monstera, I don't even know how to pronounce it, how pathetic is that? Anyway, this really tropical leaf that I'm seeing everywhere, and I love the way these look, so I decided that would make a great cover page for the month of August. And what I did here is, of course, I just did a pencil sketch to give me a rough outline of what I wanted my leaf to look like. And I'm just going to go in with my Windsor & Newton gouache paint. And as always, if you've been watching my videos before, you know I love to use my gouache paints a lot like watercolors. So I keep my colors very wet. And basically, I'm just going to paint in the lines. Real technical, I know, right? Um, but what I wanted to do with my leaf is use a lot of different colors. One tip if you want to get into painting for your bullet journal or just painting in general is to not be afraid to mix different colors into things that you're painting, especially things from nature. So like a leaf is not just going to be green. It's not going to be one specific color. Feel free to play with purples and blues and yellows and that's what I'm going to be doing a lot of here. Most of this painting, it was such a simple design, most of it was just spent blending my colors, just playing with the colors. Once I added something new, I spent a lot of time going in and just spreading it around and blending it. This is kind of, yeah, there was a lot of blending. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. There was a lot of blending that took place with this leaf, but I had a lot of fun with it. And things from nature, especially leaves and flowers, are really fun if you want to practice different shadowing techniques and just color in general. So as you can see, when I first started, I'm just kind of building up my colors. So I started off with a really light green. I'm going in with some darker green, and on the left there, I'm going in with some blue, and I'm just having fun with it. But I'm trying to keep that kind of tropical theme in my head when I'm choosing my colors. So you, for example, I'm probably not gonna stick like orange in here or anything, but I wanted to put in some purple, some blues. You'll see a tiny, tiny bit of yellow, but that got bl blended in pretty carefully. So it didn't stick out too much like you see here. I did end up going back in and blending it some more. And I like to do these cover pages on watercolor paper. If you have not seen any of my previous videos, I do this every month, so feel free to go back on my channel and watch my previous videos. But I always use cold press watercolor paper for my color pages because I love my Leuchtturm 1917 bullet journal, but I have found that the pages don't hold up to watercolor very well, or gouache in my case. You can use paints in your bullet journal, but you're probably going to see some wrinkling just because it's not artist paper. That's not what the paper is designed for. So certainly nothing against the journal whatsoever. It's great. Um, but it's not designed for, it's not designed to hold paint. So I like to use watercolor paper when I'm painting my cover page. And that way I can really practice every month, you know, my artistic skills, you know, continuing to improve and experiment without going in directly on my bullet journal and painting uh, directly on those pages. And for those of you who may be wondering, again, the brand of water, of not watercolor, I do use watercolor, but the brand of gouache that I'm using today is by Windsor and Newton. I absolutely love this gouache. They are not a sponsor. Um, I just really, really love them. The real main difference between gouache and watercolor is that gouache is much more opaque. It can behave a lot like watercolors, as you see me doing most of the time, but it can also act a lot like acrylic paint because it's very opaque. So it's a really good compromise if you're looking for a medium that's very versatile and very opaque in color. I just, I love these. Literally, every color you see me painting here, of course you know, all colors originate from the primary colors, uh, blue, red, and yellow. But really, I just have that primary color set of gouache and I use that for everything. I just love it. And I've used those little tubes of paint for a couple years now. They last forever. So I just love them. So as you can see here, I'm just building up my color. So I'll start with a really light green, now I'm going back and adding some more green, and then here in a second you will see me adding shadows to the little holes in my leaves. 
I really, really love bullet journaling. I've been bullet journaling for a little over a year now, and I mainly use my bullet journal for productivity, but here recently, I wanted to add some more fun collections. So again, go back and watch my previous video because I show you what collections I added to the very beginning of my bullet journal. I included in there a reading log. I have um, a wish list. I'm trying to remember right offhand what's in there, but I have a whole bunch of different collections that are just gonna be really handy and really helpful. Your first bullet journal, if you're doing bullet journaling for the first time, you will probably experience, not, not everyone, but you'll probably experience somewhat of a learning curve just in what you specifically like. My bullet journal, my first one, was one big giant experiment and it lasted a year. If I go in and look back at my bullet journal, every single month has something different. Something else I'm playing with, something else I'm trying. For example, and this is, I know this is going against the grain of most bullet journalers, I don't like to do mood trackers. I just, it's not my thing. I can't get into it. I love them. There's so many things you can do with them, but I just, I don't know if I'm just moodier than the average person, but so many days I'm more than one mood. So I don't know. It's just not my thing, but that was, a, that's an example. You know, I did a mood tracker for a few months before discovering that's really not something I'm into and that's okay. Your bullet journal is completely yours. So feel free to customize it to your heart's content and do whatever you want but do be prepared because your first bullet journal is probably going to be filled with different experiments like those where you're discovering what it is that you like and don't like. For example, this cover page is going to be a little bit smaller than my other cover pages. In my previous videos, I pretty much covered the whole page of my journal with the painting and then put washi tape around it. I just kind of made the um, size of my painting smaller to fit on the page better. And here is my finished leaf. I absolutely love the way this turned out. It was so simple. As you guys saw, this painting is really just about playing with color and blending and having fun with it. And you all know I'm not a hand letterer. I want to be, but I'm not even close to being there. But what I decided to do is do some really sketchy lettering this month. I just looked up some different fonts on Pinterest, found one that I liked, and it just kind of gives you a way to, if you're if you're like me and you're not big into calligraphy or hand lettering yet, or if it's something you're still working on, these kind of sketchy um, fonts are really fun to do just with your fine liners or pens or pencils or whatever, where you don't have to be a calligraphy expert to do really fun lettering in your bullet journal. And I'm feeling really, really good about myself because once again, I was able to actually be successful in setting up my little calendar. You all know that was kind of a thorn in my side there for a few months. Every time I set up my monthly calendar, I would mess it up, but ta-da, it looks great and no mess ups. So score, I'm feeling good. Starting off the bullet journal on a good note there. So what I like to do on my first page every month as I'm working on my monthly spread is make two big boxes where I list my August, well, or whatever month we're in, in this case, August, task and then my August favorites. Um, the favorites is just kind of really fun because it's fun to look back and look and see what I was into that month. Uh, but my monthly tasks are essential for my productivity because then I can take those tasks and break them up throughout the month. And I plan on doing a bullet journaling for productivity video in the future. So if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment or give this video a thumbs up. and you might even hear some chickens in the background. We do live on what we call our little mini farm. So you might hear some clucking in the background. And if you're wondering, we do have a little flock of 10 chickens. I gave that time a little bit of time to dry before I pasted it in there. And what I'm doing here, every month I like to put a little quote or a scripture verse on the monthly spread, something that I could just kind of look back on and you know, motivate and inspire and be a good reminder. So I put this scripture verse here for August. And one thing I'm trying to play with a little bit more is adding different doodles and different lines and just different little touches like you see me doing here. Um, because I was intimidated by doodles there for a while. Um, but sorry, a wasp literally just flew up in my face. Okay, so the cons of doing voiceovers outside. <laughs> Oh dear, okay, we're fine. So anyway, what I was saying is I've been practicing adding a lot more doodles like you see me doing here at the bottom of my spreads. And it just, I don't know, it gives a little extra artsy touch. Again, if you don't do calligraphy or if you if you don't do certain things in your bullet journal you see others doing, you know, doing little doodles, adding your own little touch, it's great. The reason you see a piece of washi tape here, however, is because I did make a mistake, but that's okay. I have this really fun 
copper washi tape that I love to use. I just think it's really pretty and it goes really well with my theme this month. So I just covered it up and I'm just writing anything, everything. And this is my brain dump page. If you haven't tried a brain dump page before, I would encourage you to do that. I'm one of those people who the minute I lay down in bed at night or am in the middle of something important, I will think of some idea that I want to try or something that I'm interested in, something I want to keep track of. And having just a page with no theme, with no rhyme or reason where I can just jot it down is fabulous. And here I am setting up my August habit tracker. This can change month to month, but I love this layout. This is a general bullet journal layout that lots of journalers use, and I have found it to be really, really helpful and effective. And what I do when I'm setting up my habit tracker is at the end of my page, go ahead and start counting backwards on the days of the month. That way you don't accidentally run out of room or miscount the days of the month you're working with. And then once you get back to the first day of the month, that is your cutoff where you can write on the left the habits that you're tracking. And the habits that I track, a lot of them stay the same. Like I do track um, how many day, what, what days I'm weighing in because um, I've been on a weight loss journey. So I do track what days I weigh. I track days where I spend time in my Bible. I track, I'm trying to think right offhand. I do track when I'm working on specific business related things because um, I've been working on tons of stuff like that. So make it your own, um, add your own categories as you wish. And then here I'm setting up my weekly log. And this is where I'll end up breaking up ultimately my monthly goals into weekly. So I will go back to my monthly goals, see, okay, what am I trying to accomplish this month? And then on my weekly goal or weekly log, I will go in and just put in basically what of my monthly goals I want to accomplish that week, if that makes sense. And you all know that I don't try to cover up any mistakes I make on my voiceovers. I figure, you know, we're all just here having fun. I just want to have a conversation with you guys. So if you hear me trip all over myself, I'm totally fine with that. This is not a place where you're going to find perfection. This is just reality. It's just us having fun on this little adventure. So I wrote another another little monthly at a uh, see <laughs> another month at a glance over on the left there, and then this is my to do list this box here, and then I will break up my week into two lines and I will journal on two lines for each day of that week, and that way I can journal without going crazy. It just lets me cover my highlights, and just adding another little doodle there to the bottom. So again, it's my month at a glance, my to do list, and my two days of journaling for each day. And now I'm setting up my daily log and this is my most simple spread because I like to leave lots and lots of room for writing out my to-do list. However, I do go in and add some new things that I'm going to be tracking every day to each day of the week. So you will see me actually add more to this page than you have seen me use in the past. I experimented with this the last week of July. I haven't videoed that or anything like that, but I did experiment with adding some more daily trackers and I really liked it. It's, it's kept me accountable and there's nothing as disappointing as looking back at a day and realizing you didn't accomplish anything you were tracking. So it's motivating for the next day to do better. So it's really worked out well for me. So I just start off by writing the day of the month followed by what day of the week it falls on. And I don't leave an exact number of spaces. I just kind of approximate. Um, but yeah, basically I just split the first page up into three sections for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday do two more big boxes for Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are typically smaller boxes just because it's the weekend and I don't tend to have as much going on, although not always, but that seems to generally be how it works well for me. Alright, and what I'm doing here is I'm starting to add those daily trackers. The first one I keep track of is my water. I like to drink a certain, I have this, I have a big water bottle and I like to drink six of them a day. So I've just drawn six boxes and I'll fill those in. I like to make sure I'm switching two loads of laundry a day because that's what works for me. And I have one box where I can track if I've done 30 minutes at least of my workout for that day. So six boxes for water, two boxes for switching laundry, and one box for working out. Those are the trackers I'm currently doing. I might add more to those. I might not. I'm not sure. So anyway, this is my complete August setup. I absolutely love it. I'm loving all the different doodles. I'm loving how the aesthetic looks this month. I just really like the green and the brightness of the leaf. 
and the doodles and everything new that I'm doing. This is a fresh bullet journal and I'm absolutely loving having the fresh new start. If you are new to my channel, again, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button down below and give that little bell icon a click if you would like to be notified every time I post a new video. I post a minimum of monthly to show you my new monthly setup, but I'm planning on doing tons more videos where I show you bullet journaling for productivity, supplies I like to use, etc. Bullet journaling is a passion of mine because it tells the story of my journey and it logs where I am at any specific time. So again, thank you all so much for stopping by and I will see you again next time. Bye.